Hey guys, SGT Nickel here again, and I wanted to talk about 3G's very quickly about my Grad Gun Go. This is a little thing I sort of came up with. It's um, you got your 4G's and your 3G's. Uh, 3G's is your primary, 4G's is your secondary, more long term, because you're going to need your gear. That's where the fourth G comes in. Grad Gear, sorry, Grad Gun Gear Go, and then there's Grad Gun Go. This is Grad Gun Go. I showed you the 1022 Ruger bag, take down all that. It's a great grab gun go bag, but I have another one. This one's a shotgun style. The JIC from Mossberg sort of inspired me. I already had this shotgun I've been working on, making smaller. And uh, finally, it's it's um, perfect for, for this exact scenario. So um, let's say there's, uh, I've got sheep, and there's wolves running around chasing my sheep. Uh, and uh, I need to get the gun and go take care of it. Well, this is how fast it is. Not quick. Just have to grab it. It's my grab gun go bag. It's another one. It's a tactical shotgun scabber. I took all the strapping off it, more or less, except for these four here. And I'll get into that in just a minute. I took the main sling off it and I added the sling that I had on my shotgun. The reason I put this sling on instead of keeping it necessarily on the gun is it doesn't fit on the gun when it's in the scabbard. It gets tangled up. This doesn't go in the way it, I would want it to. So I decided to get it on the outside. And I had both slings on there and along with other straps and stuff. And when you got that stuff hanging off, you're more likely to get tangled on the things. So I got rid of it all. If you get tangled, it's slowing you down. So... I took all that off and I just left the one sling on, which makes it very easy to wear. I can always take this sling off, put it on the gun, put the scabbard away. But the scabbard gives the gun more protection. It gives some protection against me and the gun because it adds some padding. So if I'm carrying around all day, it's not going to start bruising or pushing into my back with its um, odd shapes. So it makes it a lot more comfortable. I can get to my firearm very quick anyway. Um, there's many ways I could wear it. These straps are handy. I can strap it to my rucksack. I can strap it to tactical webbing. I guess I could strap it to a belt and carry it. Get my shotgun out. Um, whatever way I needed to. Um, I've got a side saddle on it, which it does fit. It had a tightening strap, which I took off, because with the side saddle on it, it actually fits in pretty tight. As you can see, I just let it sit upside down, and the shotgun's not falling out. So, I like that. If I shake it around, the shotgun will. But, um, it works pretty good. And the other thing I like about these side straps is I can either mount it to the things I already said, or you can mount it to a motorcycle, a bicycle, you can mount it to the panniers on a bike, you can mount it to um, pretty much anything that you can your imagination can think of where these straps will work. They're also button, which is really handy. So if you have a permanent object that doesn't open, you open these up, slide them in, snap them, and you can basically hang it even on a wall. And uh, back of your truck, you know, a whole bunch of different things you can do with it. So, um, yeah, that works. The um, other thing I like about it is it's just, uh, I don't know, very compact, you can throw in the truck, protects the gun. I've got a lock method that I've figured out. I recommend if you're an adult, or not an adult, but if I, kids shouldn't be playing with these anyway. So, you want to lock it up. So if you're a parent and you have curious kids and you're worried about that and you're out camping, you can always leave some in the mag magazine, but you can always just lock it up like this or lock it up unloaded and put it away if you're um, storing it. It's non-restricted. It doesn't have to have a trigger lock on it, but I think it's good practice. Um, so, you can have them in the tube. Always keep the chamber empty when you scabber a shotgun. It doesn't matter if safety's on or not. This scabber can easily switch over the, sh the safety. Um, it can snag the trigger, pushing it in especially. So always make sure there's at least nothing in the chamber, but I mean, I think it's safe enough to have them in the tube. You cannot pump it. I've just locked it. I'll show you how I did that, but as you see, I can't pull it out. 
because I have a sling mount on here. I was able to slide the lock through the sling mount right there, and it's through this little loop here. That's for another sling on the uh, scabber. And I found just with a standard lock like that, it locks really well. And then if you, um, you can put it in storage this way, but if it's in storage, take them out of the tube because it's technically a loaded gun, even even if they're in the tube and the uh, the chamber's empty. They call that coach carry, but it's still loaded because magazine's undetachable. So just for your law knowledge, it's, it's good to put away unloaded, but if you were camping and you were um, had to get to your firearm quick enough, or had to get it quickly, but you know, you could always lock it still in some scenarios. If you're actually out in the woods, I don't recommend having a lock on it. You want to get to your gun. You don't want to be fiddling with a key when the bear is rushing. So, anyway, I'll quickly just show you the loadout that I have. This happens to be all buckshot. I'm on a farm. I have a scatter shot law. You could always use slugs, but um, where I am right now, uh, it's strictly scatter shot. So, I've got scatter shot. I don't. I got bird shot, but for predator fence, I don't like it. It's got a real wide spread. You're more likely to hit some of your livestock too with it. I like a tighter, tighter grouping. The double up buck is is better for that. Um, I would prefer slugs, but the laws don't allow me here. But if I was on Vancouver Island or anywhere else where there are bear and you can use rifles, I would definitely be having slugs. But what I got on here are rubber slugs. Those are allowed for uh, defense and also some kind of um, animal. Well, I guess it's still defense, but you can use them on deer and things like that to hit them in the rump, basically scare them off. It does not penetrate. It just gives them a good sting. I call that a warning. This is also what I call a verbal warning. It's just a loud banger. It's uh, two and three quarter inches of powder, and that's all. No projectile. And it just gives out a big wallop and a huge boom. And that's good for scaring bear, and uh, I use it actually for eagles when they're attacking the chickens, because you can't legally shoot an eagle, uh, nor would I want to, so I use the bangers for that. Um, i got one buckshot here. I've got three buckshot in the tube right now for a demonstration. Uh, the reason I only put three in and not four is it's got nothing to do with the hunting laws, because this is a defensive uh, shotgun. I would hunt with this on worst case scenario, but generally speaking, it's set up for defense. And the reason you only put three in is because if I wanted to change what I my loadout, let's say I wanted to use a slug or a sound flare, I would have to open it, dump my uh, buck out, and then put in what I wanted, like a, a port load. And that just takes too long. So you put three in, you've got your lethal load all ready to go. That's three buck shots. So if the bear comes or whatever it is, you can just go boom, boom, boom if you had to and then reload. But if, let's say, I wanted to just scare it, I can put in my sound flare and it fits. And now it's that fast. Just rack it. Now I can boom. Make a huge kaboom. And hopefully whatever it is runs away or flies away. And then what I would also... Um, and of course the other reason, I mean, it's the same exact same reason but just, let's say I wanted to go the rubber load. I can also do that. Now it's ready. So, like I said, it's just, um, just makes it a little faster and a little easier to, um, to operate. I did a video on the back end here of how I made this pistol grip. I did an addition to it, which I thought was kind of cool. I got a piece of black pipe, which was uh, aluminum paintball barrel. It was 6 to 8 caliber. It happened to fit perfectly. I cut it to thickness and put it on the end of here and that stops this item from sliding back and forth. When I said before it doesn't matter whether it slides back and forth, it doesn't. But I found with this case, uh, when it was sticking out here, it just caught in the way all the time. So I wanted to get it on the same side as my side saddle because that way it's bulky on the same side and it's less profile there instead of the other way around. Because this is just a, um, just a plug that held on the swinging, the swinging um, butt stock that I had on there. And I wanted to put it back on so I could use the sling mount. And I didn't want this big gaping hole that you could see through there and just get dirt in there. I figured keep the plug there, it doesn't get lost. And 
I can always put my folding stock back on this thing if I wanted to. So that's just, uh, I mean, I've done videos on this. I didn't want to, I don't want to be talking too much about the gun. Just want to show the loadout and how it was set up for my, my three Gs. I wanted to show the, uh, of course, the scabbard that I just picked up. Now Fox Tactical happens to make these. I can show you the card. And um, I quite like it. I paid about uh, twenty-seven ninety-nine for it, Canadian with tax. So add fourteen percent to that. Well, maybe a little less. I forget what taxes are. But anyway, I'm going to do a whole other rant on taxes one day. But anyway, <laughs> this is the uh, three G's for my uh, grab gun go predator defense, and it's a shotgun. If you've got any comments or um, questions, feel free to add those. Always happy to try to reply to those. I can't reply to your actual comment now anymore. Uh, don't know what's going on with YouTube here. But anyway, um, I will definitely throw it down on the comment stream, and hopefully you can catch it. Um, uh, if, if I reply, I'll click a like on your... Um, your comment most likely. Well, if I like it, I'll definitely do that. But if it's something I'm going to reply to quite often, I'll click a like and then I will reply to it. So, um, yeah. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, I like this bag. It's really cool. First time I bought it, I wasn't so happy with it until I got all the straps off it and then set up my way. And this thing's awesome. Um, I'm going to find different ways to strap it on things and see how many things I can attach this thing to. <laughs> Anyway, hope you like this vid.